So I'm going to uh, share my screen and take you through some uh, slides of another uh, app that we have uh, developed uh, at eCraft. Um, and uh, this is the, the, re the Regreening Africa app. And uh, basically, uh, this is an app that we've developed uh, building on what you just saw uh, on the Africa Tree Finder. So with the Africa Tree Finder, uh, you can, in the countries that it covers, you can uh, find suitable species uh, for planting for different types of purposes, as you saw, for specific locations. In the Regreening Africa app, um, we've designed an app that then allows you to, to plan these interventions and then track the interventions on the ground. So the idea here is that what we're doing is what we call assisted crowdsourcing for monitoring at scale. And for those of you who have been on the, on the whole uh, call today, you have, will have, you probably heard uh, uh, Thomas uh, Krauser talking about uh, sort of the bigger picture, like in terms of it not being only about planting trees, but also about land restoration in general. So this is really what I'm going to be talking about right now. And it's kind of around the recording and tracking restoration efforts. Um, and that includes tree planting, it includes farmer managed natural regeneration, and nursery establishment and availability of planting materials. So those are the three modules in the app. And then I'll be linking it to work that we're doing with land health, overlaying the information that comes out of the app onto maps of, of land health indicators that allows us to look at restoration. So in the tree planting module of the app, we basically, users basically uh, can uh, record trees that they're planting in their in-farmer fields. So from this, we can obviously then look at uh, what types of trees are being planted. We can determine the diversity of the trees planted, and we can look at the performance of tree planting which is really important. So this example here is from Rwanda, uh, where uh, with data submitted in 2020 alone, so only in the last few months, where we have almost half a million trees planted as part of the Regreening Africa project, which is funded by the EU. And so uh, in the app, we not only can we look at the trees that have been planted, but we can also calculate survival rates. And we can look at, what trees are being planted across different niches on farms. So whether they're planted in woodlots, home gardens, in crop fields, internal boundaries, external boundaries, etc. And we can also look at the survival rates within these niches and really determine uh, the success of tree planting and where we have challenges and where we need interventions to improve performance. And one thing here that you see from Rwanda in the tree planting is that we have mostly exotic species and relatively low species diversity, at least in terms of the dominant species that are being planted. So with this app, we can address this and go back to implementing partners and stakeholders on the ground and, and discuss how we can improve uh, in, on, on the plant tree planting in terms of diversification, for example. Also in the app, uh, the users deline delineate their, their field boundaries and, um, and then they count, they have the number of trees planted, the locations of the trees, as you can see on the map here. Um, and we have then, as I mentioned, the survival of the trees. So we have this, not only have this information, but we have it in a spatially explicit way for each individual field. Another example of the use of the app is the Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration or FMNR module. This example is from Senegal. And one of the things we notice here right away is that there's a lot more diversity uh, in terms of uh, FMNR than there is in tree planting in term, in relative to the example we saw from Rwanda. So here we see that a lot of the most dominant species or most of the most dominant species are indigenous species. So not exotics as we saw with the tree planting. So that in itself is obviously an important insight. And again, with the FMNR, uh, farmers uh, record their field boundaries and that allows us to do assessments, uh, spatial assessments as well. In addition, we have the nursery module uh, where we uh, tr track inventories uh, within nurseries of planting materials, and, but also performance uh, and quality of, of the seeds and the seedlings that go into this process. And the whole idea is to help 
the users of the app to ensure that farmers have access to quality planting materials and a wide range of species for tree planting. And so, of course, which of course is really critical for the success of restoration efforts. In addition to the app itself, there's a data reporting system um, that's online and can be accessed by the users of the app where they can look globally at what's being collected. So at the top here, we see the countries where the app is being um, applied or used. See so Rwanda is the dominant one in this project. And of course, this app was developed as part of a project, but it's available for anyone to use from the Google Play Store and followed by Senegal and Kenya. And if we click on Kenya, for example, here, we then can go in and look at what types of interventions, whether it's FMNR, tree planting, et cetera. And we get information on number of institutions and farmers, et cetera, that have been uh, doing these interventions on the ground. Now, when it also um, really important here, as I mentioned in the beginning, is how we can now link this information that comes from the app two spatial assessments that we do on the ground. So this is a map of Rwanda showing soil organic carbon at a, meter of, at a resolution of 30 meters on the ground, which means that we can go down to the level of those individual polygons that you see, so those farmer fields, and extract this information. So this is based on models developed at ECRAF over more than a decade of data, systematic data collection across the global tropics. So it's based on a database with more than 200,000 soil samples from across the global tropics. And with this data, we can, by combining the spatial assessments and the maps that you see an example of here, we can apply the, this, uh, this information, for example, for soil carbon monitoring, and also to in, the, in climate neutrality goals, and for setting restoration targets, and not least, of course, for tracking restoration performance over time. Also, we gain critical insights into drivers of land degradation that allow us to more effectively target and design uh, in the restoration, uh, the actual sort of uh, options that we implement on the ground. And one of the reasons, one of the things that's really important for doing that is understanding the interactions between different processes of, for example, land degradation. And here, the example is with erosion prevalence again at a very high spatial resolution uh, for the different countries in what included in the Regreening Africa project. And then on the right hand side you see soil organic carbon. And by looking at the interactions between erosion and carbon, for example, we can determine, and other processes, we can determine what processes are driving carbon dynamics in these landscapes. And that allows us to then target where we need to put our interventions. So what processes in these systems do we have to somehow influence or tweak in order to obtain restoration targets, for example. So that's all uh, on the Regreening app. Back to you, Vania, and feel free to contact us on the email address here on the slide. Thank you.